The Holy Tales. This story should be interesting. The story is about why God chose a new king after Saul. Okay, let's begin with the story then. God chose Saul as the first king of Israel. But unfortunately, Saul always did not make good decisions. Once, Israel was in an ugly war with the Philistines. And for seven days, Saul and his men hid at a place called Gilgal, where they waited for Samuel to arrive, as that was what Samuel had asked them to do. The Israelite soldiers were so afraid to fight the Philistines that they started fleeing one at a time. So Saul decided to take matters in his own hand and offered a burnt sacrifice to God. The moment he finished with the sacrifice, Samuel arrived and asked, What are you doing? My men are afraid to fight the Philistines and they are starting to run away. I had to stop them. I was seeking God's help because without his help, it is impossible to fight the war. If you had obeyed God's command, then he would have made you the king of Israel forever. But now that you have disobeyed him, your reign must end, as God has already chosen a new king whose heart follows his. Samuel said, Another time, Saul once again disobeyed God by not destroying the Amalekites as he was ordered. Instead, he captured the king and let his own soldiers take a lot of cattle and sheep. When Samuel challenged his disobedience, Saul had an excuse. Yes, I have brought back the king, but the rest of the nation is all wiped out. We brought back the best of sheep and cattle to use them to make our sacrifices to God. He wants our sacrifices. Yes, he wants our sacrifices, but he wants obedience more and you have disobeyed him. It is obedience that pleases God. Samuel said firmly, God was done with Saul's excuses and he chose a new king for Israel, who Samuel would anoint very soon. Saul shouldn't have disobeyed God and should have followed his commands. Yes, but he didn't. So, what is today's question, Holy? Today's question is, with whom did the Israelites get into an ugly battle? Um, the Amalekites? Oh, no, no, the Philistines! Are you sure, Freckles? Um, yes, I think so. Am I wrong? <laughs> no, you are correct. The Holy Tales Good to see you all. So are you ready to listen to a brand new story from the Bible? Oh, yes, we are! Great! Today's story is about how David honored his promise made to his friend Jonathan. When Jonathan and David declared their lifelong friendship, Jonathan asked an important favor from David. He knew that one day David would become the king and when that happened, he would show kindness to any member of Jonathan's family who were still around. After Jonathan's death, David remembered the promise he made to his friend. But he was not sure if any family members of Saul's or Jonathan's were still alive. He called for a man named Seba, who had once been a loyal servant to King Saul. David asked Ziba, is there anyone still alive from King Saul's family? If yes, then I would like to show God's kindness to the person. Ziba replied, I know that one of Jonathan's son is still alive. 
His name is Mephibosheth. David immediately sent for him. Mephibosheth came in front of David but was terrified. He knew his grandfather, King Saul, tried many a times to kill David and he thought David wanted to kill him for Saul's actions. Don't be afraid. David assured him. I mean no harm. I want to help you. I have made a promise to your father that I will always be kind to his family and I would like to honor that promise. I would return you all the land that once belonged to your grandfather. However, I would like if you live here in the palace with me. Mephibosheth was overcome with gratefulness. He fell to the ground crying as he thanked David for showing such kindness towards him. David called for Ziba once again and informed him that he had returned all the land to Mephibosheth, which once belonged to King Saul. David said to Ziba, I would like you, your sons and your men to farm the land for his family so that they have enough food. However, Mephibosheth will live in the palace here with me. Since then, Ziba, his sons and his servants farmed the land for Mephibosheth, while Mephibosheth lived in the palace with David, like his own son. Tabby Gumbel, I honor to keep all promises I make to both of you. <laughs> I declare you both as my lifelong friends. And you too, Holy. Thank you, Freckles. You are my lifelong friend too. Now, it's time for today's question. What was the name of King Saul's loyal servant? I know. His name was Zeba. You're correct. The Holy Tales All right, all right. Today's story is called Judah's Last Days and Isaiah's Vision. Whoa, a story about a vision? I love stories which have visions. Go on, Holy. The nation of Judah just did not seem to get it right. God sent his prophets to warn the nation to obey God, repent for their sins, and straighten their lives. But the people of Judah ignored God and the prophets and the messages that were sent to them. They continued to do what they wanted to do, more than often disobeying God. They should have known that God would not put up with this disrespect and disobedience for long. So, it was time for Judah to come crashing down. One prophet of God was Isaiah. One day, he had a vision, which was a message from God. Isaiah saw God sitting on a throne, wearing a long robe, which covered the entire temple. There were six winged seraphims flying around the throne, covering their feet with two wings, covering their eyes with two, and flying around with the other two. They all sang praises of the Lord in loud voices, which shook the building to its very foundation. The entire room was filled with smoke. Isaiah thought he was done for and would be destroyed soon. He thought to himself, I know I'm a sinful man, and so is the entire human race. However, I have seen the Lord himself with my own eyes. Isaiah saw one of the seraphims fly to the altar and pick up a burning coal with a pair of tongs. The seraphim touched Isaiah's lips with the burning coal and said, See, this coal has touched your lips. Now your sin is forgiven. Isaiah heard the Lord asking a question. 
who should I send to bring a message to see my people? Isaiah said, I will go, send me. God said, Go and tell my people that they may hear my words, but they will not understand my message. See my work, but won't understand it. I will harden their hearts and close their eyes and ears. And you must do this until all the cities and the whole country is destroyed. Until their houses are empty and no one is left in them. Israel will become like a tree which is cut down. However, it will again grow from a holy seed. So, did you enjoy the story? Oh yes, I did. I forgot all about eating. <laughs> That's quite something, Gumbo. Now, time for today's question. How many wings did the seraphims have? I know. They had six wings. Well done, Freckles. The Holy Tales. So today, I have decided to tell you the story about what happened when Jonah went to Nineveh to preach God's message. That sounds quite interesting. Begin with the story, Holy. All right. So, God once again sent Jonah to Nineveh to deliver his message the moment the fish spit him out. Jonah obeyed God this time and ran to Nineveh. The city of Nineveh was so huge that it took three days for Jonah to see all of it. As Jonah entered the city, he shouted, Forty days from now, Nineveh will be destroyed. The people of Nineveh were so scared, they believed his message. Every single person living in Nineveh, from the richest to the poorest, fasted and wore sackcloth to show their sorrow. Even the king stepped down from his throne, took off his royal robe and wore a sackcloth. He issued a decree in all of Nineveh that no living being, including animals, should eat or drink anything. Everyone must turn away from evil ways, stop violence, wear sackcloth, and pray, so that God may have pity on them and not destroy them. When God saw that the people were turning away from their evil ways and starting to follow him, he had mercy on them and did not destroy the city. This made Jonah very, very angry. He shouted, I knew you would do something like this, and that's why I ran away the first time. You are so loving and compassionate that I knew you would forgive them. Kill me. Let me die. What are you so angry about? God asked Jonah. Jonah went outside the city of Nineveh and built a shelter where he could sit and wait to see what happened to the city. God made a plant grow with big leaves so that it could shade Jonah from the sun. Jonah was very grateful for the plant. But a few days later, God made a worm in the plant which ate its stem from inside, finally killing it. Jonah did not have any shade from the scorching sun anymore. He was so miserable, he prayed to God to kill him. God asked Jonah, Is it right for you to be angry because the plant died? Yes, angry enough to die. Jonah shouted. God said, You feel bad for the plant even though you did nothing to make it grow. Plants have short lives, but there are almost 120,000 people living in the city of Nineveh who know nothing about me. Shouldn't I feel sorry for them? That was a good way God used to make Jonah understand, don't you think? Yes, it was. That 
was a wonderful story, Holy. So what is today's question? Um, how many people lived in the city of Nineveh? I know. A hundred and twenty thousand. That's absolutely correct. Well done, Freckles. I hope you like the story too. Stay tuned for more stories from the Bible. Until next time. To watch more videos, please subscribe. Plants and trees. On the fourth day, God created the sun to shine in the day, the moon and stars to come out at night. One day, Moses went to Mount Horeb with his sheep. There, God appeared to him as a flame of fire in a bush. Since there was no room anywhere else, they decided to spend the night in a stable. Here, Mary had her baby, Jesus. She wrapped him in a blanket and put him to sleep. He's got the whole